Thoughts on Mini Finny? Do you have a favorite action figure? Unconsensual. This was made and then presented to me, and now it is there, and I don't know what to do with it. Do you have a favorite action figure? Yeah, growing up, I was, like, very enamored with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a really great little Donatello. I think Donatello was the one that had the two swords. Maybe they weren't even swords. Maybe they were just sticks. I don't know what kind of uh, level of violence and gore the, the Ninja Turtles were... Uh, partaking in, but yeah, Donatello was cool, and Shredder was cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Phineas, and Esquire has asked me to explain some things, so let's dive in, shall we? Explain why you were in the Oval Office. How did it feel? We were on tour in 2022. We were playing a show in Washington, D.C. This is I was playing in my sister Billy's band. We got an invitation to meet Jill Biden at the White House. And the day before our meeting with Jill, Jill had to fly somewhere else to do something. And the White House team, they were like, Jill's busy. And we were like, no worries. And they were like, would meeting Joe be okay? Which is so funny to phrase it like that. And we were like, okay. And we went and hung with Joe. It was pretty uh, epic. One of the memories that I have was... Um, he was kind of showing us around and he took us inside and outside. And it was February in DC. It was nice and cold and wintry. And so there was a door that was shut, you know, and had like done that thing that happens in the change of seasons where the wood is like expanding and shuts. And so me and uh, me and the Prez did a like push on three situation where we pushed a door open really hard at the White House. Did you ever figure out why Questlove flipped you off? on your Tonight Show appearance. Yeah, the way that they have it set up, much like this room, is like there's a camera operator right behind you. And if I had known the camera operator for years and had never met you, I might do that to the camera operator and it might look like I'm doing that to you. I think that was what, what ended up happening was he was having a little moment of camaraderie with a person he knew super well. And it looked to me like he pointed right at me and flipped me off. But we're cool now. And by cool now, I mean that he flips me off every time I see him now, because that's the new bit. If you could only take three albums to a deserted island, what would they be? Three albums probably that I could tie together to make a raft, I guess. So they'd have to be like big double album box set. Like I have like a cake box set. Maybe I'd take that. Maybe I'd take like a queen compendium and maybe like a Led Zeppelin box set, just because they're girthy and they might be weight bearing. At what point do you know that a song you're writing is meant for yourself versus meant for Billy? Used to be that I'd sit around and write songs uh, for no kind of um, designated person or place, and that has kind of changed over time. If I'm writing a song for me, I'm usually writing it with the intention of putting it out under my own name. And the other thing that's changed is that Billy co-writes everything now. She's always co-written most of the music that we've made together, but there were occasional songs like Ocean Eyes, When the Party's Over, that I wrote and then sort of brought to her. But now we write everything together, so that's the easiest way. How do you approach writing a song for a soundtrack? It is different every time for the song No Time to Die for James Bond. We were given the pages of the script up to where the song would come in and wrote the song from what we had learned from that. And then for Barbie, Greta invited us to see most of the film, they were still editing it. So we saw a lot of the beginning of the film and then many scenes throughout, including the scene that the song is actually in where Ruth tells Barbie to feel for the first time. So different, but both really enjoyable ways to write a song. What do you remember from working on Glee? I'd say one of the predominant uh, memories of working on Glee was just that I was so damn young. I was so much younger than everybody that I never was able to like go to any after parties or go to bars with anybody. Like I was 17 and had no fake ID and I would just go home because I couldn't go anywhere. But everybody was really nice to me. It wasn't their fault that they uh, employed a child. What was it like to perform at Warped Tour with your high school band? Wow, crazy photo. So we won a battle of the bands when I was like 16 or 17. And because we won a battle of the bands, we were allowed to play one 20 minute time slot on the Vans Warped Tour at the Pomona Fairgrounds in California. And uh, we had no roadies or anything. So we spent like 14 minutes of the 20 minutes setting up our stuff on the stage. And then we played one song and they were like, all right, get off the stage. What's different about releasing music on vinyl versus digital? Well, the difference between releasing music on vinyl versus digital is that you can hold it and you can see the artwork bigger than just like this big. I feel like 
artwork on you know Spotify and Apple Music and Tidal etc they just will not let you zoom in on that shit. it's crazy they just want it to be as tiny as possible and I think there's also a different psychologic uh, element to it which is like you put the album on and you're letting it play and then you're flipping it over and you're playing side B and I think that that's a great way to listen to music I find that sometimes I get really ADHD with my streaming I play a song and in the middle of it I think ooh, I want to hear this other song on to the next thing Explain these picks, including the ears and chainmail. Our friend Charlotte D'Alessio wanted to celebrate her birthday this past year at the Renaissance Fair. And you can't go to the Renaissance Fair dressed normal. You gotta dress theme appropriate. I think you're very looked down upon if you dress normal. Is it true that you originally wrote Ocean Eyes for yourself? I mean, the short answer is yes, I wrote Ocean Eyes for myself. I really just wrote songs for the sake of writing songs. It wasn't really like a for or not for myself kind of a thing, but I wrote it and then my band that I had in high school played it. We sounded so bad playing that song. And so I was like, gosh, I would love if somebody else would like to sing this song. Let me see if my sister would like to sing this song. And she obliged and changed both of our lives. How was writing for Crying Out Loud different than for Optimist? I wrote all of Optimist pretty much uh, downstairs in my like basement studio alone. And uh, for writing the album for Crying Out Loud, I roped a bunch of my friends into it. And we all got in a room and jammed like the, the days of yore and um, made a bunch of stuff that I'm really, really proud of. What's the secret to a successful, professional, creative relationship with anyone, let alone a sibling? Empathy. I think empathy is the secret to a successful creative relationship. You gotta see where they're coming from and navigate a disagreement with a lot of empathy and try to provide empathy to your suggestions and your ideas. I love collaborating. I mean, especially I've collaborated the most of anyone in my life with my sister and I think she's brilliant. And so the inspiration that I get from working with her is such a luxury. So I'm very happy to collaborate with her. How does it feel watching Billy on tour without you? It's emotional. I mean, I wish I was there every night to see her rock out in person. I thought maybe I would feel some sense of like, God, I wish I was there participating. And it's obviously super fun to play shows with her, but I really mainly just miss watching her perform every night. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.